the understanding is, I guess, that we just I head back to my room and okay. uh, rest up. Just rest until enough, I'm trying called to, trying to recover. A day or so. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the day passes uneventfully. The current date, which we need to start keeping track of, is two thirty-five. So uh, night falls, morning dawns. Now it's two thirty-six. Um, the way they keep track of the day uh, in the forty-first millennium is that the new year is day one. And then the last day of the year is day 365. Okay. Um, so, uh, morning dawns and Eli and Engelbart, you've been, I guess, trading off uh, watch to make sure that you both get enough sleep for the night. Mm -hmm. um, who's, who's watching at dawn? Uh, I guess since I elected to watch first, I watched first and then Engelbart was watching second. Okay, so Engelbart... Um, at, at dawn, you hear a sort of a low moaning coming from inside the room. What do you do? Stab blankly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's just um, you and me now, yeah. hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, now coming hand. from the room, I would scan the room, try and figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, the man is actually sort of rolled over in the corner. Uh, he's still mostly out, but it looks like, you know, from being able to roll over and being able to sort of moan and groan, he is improving a little bit. Looks like he might actually wake up sometime today. Hmm. He's not bound, is he? I don't think we bound him. Um, the yeah. room is a cell, so the door is a heavy, thick sheet of riveted steel with a small window box that can open I'm more from concerned the about him harming himself as opposed okay. to anything else. Yeah. Someone should probably bind him. You could probably ask the guards for a, a sort of a... I guess handcuffs wouldn't necessarily work since he's missing an arm now. But uh, maybe a like a, a chain around the waist and then, you, you know... You chain him to the wall, put him yep. in irons, chain it to his suppose. ankle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, seems like a good idea. All right, well, I'll ask the guards to uh, sort that out. All right, yeah, they bring you a couple of uh, sort of medieval looking devices, you know, spikes on them and clamps and various restraints and they hand them to you and then they, they head off. They have received the word that they don't, they're not supposed to be meddling with this room at all. All right, well, in that case, I guess I'll apply the restraints. Okay, yep, you head in and you clap them on him, shackle him to the wall, uh, manacle his legs. He's not going to be going anywhere or, you know, really doing much of anything. Um, later that, that morning around 10 a.m., Jax, uh, someone starts knocking on your door. Um, I answer it in my right. underwear. <laughs> in your underwear. <laughs> awesome. It is Karna Phaedrus, the matron of House Phaedrus. Ah, she she yeah. looks you up and down ah. and says, well. I do apologize, ma'am. Uh, I'm resting up from a battle. Can I have a minute to make myself decent and then I'll speak with you, obviously. By all means, she just sort of gives a dismissive wave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I suit up as right. fast as I can, and then I reopen the door. Yep. Uh, she says, ah, you're looking much better. Yeah, sorry about that. How are you feeling? I noticed you had a wound. Yeah, uh, the line of duty can bring some, uh, some dangers. I I'm fine now, ma'am. Thank you for asking. I'm resting up and uh, with my able-bodied crew, crew uh, I was able to be uh, pretty healed up. Are you much of a shooter, Jax? No, but I know someone who... I mean, I'm okay. And then he, like, flashes back to missing point-blank shotgun at the back of someone's <laughs> head. And he's like, ah, you know, I... No, I, but I do know somebody that is very good if I, if I could be of service with uh, my friend, Eli. Do you do much hunting, Mr. Romulus? Oh, yes, you could say that. Yes, absolutely. I was hoping I could impose on you and your friends to join me and some of my friends on a hunt through the Underhive. Well, what will we be hunting? There is a particularly virulent race of beast that thrives down in the lower mines. They are called uh, slag rats. They are grotesque creatures, hairless, tailless, four-legged, milky-eyed rat men. And uh, they breed in cycles and terrorize the mine workers. So every once in a while, members of our esteemed noble class 
tend to make trips down and hunt down the creatures. It's a something of a game for the nobility and those who bring in the, the largest and most exotic looking species uh, get bragging rights amongst their peers, which as you know is of great importance. Well, you know, friend, I appreciate the offer. I'll definitely run it by the crew. Um, we are uh, currently on a... We're, we're chasing down some leads, and, and time is, of course, of the essence, but if time does permit, a little R&R &R does go a long way in helping the mine free up, free up, its, free up itself to uh, solve these mysteries. So oh, it's absolutely. a chance. Yeah. Is there... What leads are you pursuing at the moment? Well, man, uh, with all due respect, we'll, we'll uh, make sure and and solidify the leads and then, and then get back to you. Currently, right now, of course, uh, we're chasing down someone that was stealing from the mutant that we had slain holding uh, your daughter. So we're, we're figuring it all out now. Oh, well, very well. Uh, we were hoping to depart early tomorrow morning, say 7 a.m. Let your friends know, and, and please... I really would take it as a personal favor if you could join us. Ah, uh, okay, very good, friend. I think you can you can damn near count on it. I'll I'll ask to make sure though. All right. She she strides away, her long silk blue gown trailing behind her. Okay. Um, I guess with that, my day has started. So I just make my way to where the guys were left off. Where well, actually, I I knock on Frix's door to then head there. Okay. Frix, are you joining Jax? Uh, I am joining Jax. All right. So you guys make it back down to where Engelbart is staring blankly at the wall. <laughs> You've discovered, Engelbart, through the night that um, the light switch actually controls one of the glow globes inside of that, that's lighting the cell. <laughs> there's, a, there's a large bulbous globe that hangs from the ceiling that appears to suspend uh, some molten metal in a magnetic field. And as you tweak and fiddle with the knob, you can cause the metal to rise or lower or brighten or dim. It's all very fascinating. Mm. I will begin the ritual of the lighting. This will take approximately three hours. I will apply the sacred unguent. Mm. He started that a while ago. This is the yeah. next day. Yeah, it's a long ritual. I know, what three hours. I you have to appease the machine spirit. Do you know what happens when a machine spirit gets angry? Do you have any idea? You know, instead Not of really. turning the light on, it might burn off your hand. Or it may Ooh. pretend to turn the light on, then a couple of hours later the glow globe melts and you're underneath it and suddenly it burns your face off. That can happen. You've got to be careful. I want to investigate the, uh, the bonds that uh, Jericus is in. Okay. What are you looking for specifically? I'm, I'm just curious about how, like, how he is confined now. Uh, Engelbart, how did, you, how did you shackle up Jericus? Um, I shackled his legs, tied them together, and I shackled his one remaining arm to the wall. There you have it, Frix. That's how you find it. Is it is the is the one shackled arm to the wall? Is there a loose chain there? Is there is it literally shackled to the wall? I mean, I've watched a lot of episodes of Inquisitors, uh, so I, I'm pretty up to speed with proper binding and, you know, restraints. So I just wanted to double check and make sure. Jax, what do you feel about this Imperial Psyker seeming to think she knows a whole lot about restraining people? Adorable. Jax is kind of like, <laughs> Jax like, kind of like, let's go over her hand and lets her into the room and she's <laughs> looking at the wall and stuff. Uh, yeah, any movement uh, on our, our, uh, our guy here, friends? Yeah. Well, Engelbart, what did you see this morning? Well, I saw the wall for the most part. <laughs> Staring at that, I got I've got a good scan of it. I think I could accurately reproduce images of the wall on demand. That's very impressive, Engelbart. Uh, yeah. Your your gentleman seems to be stirring. It seems like he might wake up sometime today. Um, and you know, as as you all stand around, he starts uh, sort of rolling over on one side or or trying to, and stops himself by by j jerking against the, his arm that's pinned to the wall. And he, he slowly sort of opens his eyes and, and takes a look around. He's, he's very pale. Looks like he's lost a lot of blood. He's pretty groggy. I'm not in the room at this point, right? I, I left after my shift. Is that accurate? Well, it's about 10 a.m. Um, I guess they didn't go collect you. Okay. Well, we'll deal with me after this. Thing. Okay. I kneel down next to him. 
and say, uh, good morning, friend. You, you might notice that you're missing an arm. And we're going <laughs> to ask you some questions. And if you don't answer them correctly, I'm going to... I'm going to see to it that one limb at a time is missing each time you wake up for the rest of your life, which could be about five more days, because that's about when we get bored. It gets to your head. Awesome. Can you roll an intimidation check? Sure. That's for against sure. your strength. Um, I've had a, a number of comments about, uh, from viewers that are wondering how this mechanic works. What is your strength, Jax? 39. Okay, I'm giving you a plus 30 for the circumstance of him being... Um, chained to the wall, missing an arm. So the way this works is that um, Jax takes his 39 strength, that's his target number, he adds 30 to it, so that now he has a 69 as his target number. And he rolls 1d100, and he tries to get lower than that target number. That didn't. 72, 69 to 72. Um, he, he is wary, he looks at you, but it doesn't even necessarily seem like he really understands what you're saying, actually. Like, his, his eyes sort of defocus and then focus back on you. He looks casually down at, at his intact arm when, when you say that he's missing an arm. He looks back at you and, and he sort of, he just goes, Ugh. and that's all he can muster right now. I say, uh, I pat him on the shoulder and say, it looks like you need to rest up, good boy. I will be, uh, I'll be back later today, but you probably shouldn't let this go to tomorrow morning. Uh, that is, if you ever want to shake hands or some shit. I don't know what you do with your hands, but <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna cut your hand off. That's what we're trying to get. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove it surgically, and you're gonna wake up just fine. Uh, he, you see a little glimmer of recognition in his eyes, and he sort of he scrabbles his feet against the floor as he tries to sort of back up against the wall. Okay, uh, Eli, what are you up to right now? So I left, <coughs> Jesus, my voice, I left at like 6, is that when the shift ended around? What time do like shops open here? Uh, or what time would people go into work, I guess is the better question. What kind of shop are you looking for? Uh, to go where Fricks and Jax bought their uh, yeah. armor. Like the armory, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he opens his shop pretty early, it's probably open around 7. So okay. you can head out quite early in the morning and get there. Yeah, I'll just... What, what type of penalties do I take for not sleeping that night? Am I just tired throughout the day? Oh, man, good question. Um, I think there is something specific. Uh, what I might say is that um, you reduce your fatigue by one, and... Uh, you'll probably, if you, if you fail to sleep again, oh wait, I just saw it, there's something called fatigued. Yeah, when you are fatigued, all of your tests take a minus 10 penalty. So that's Christ. if you, if you are, if you stayed up and didn't get any sleep, then you'll become fatigued. And how much I, sleep is needed to not get fatigued? Eight hours, full rest? Well, you've been sleeping pretty well recently, so I'll say if you if you get five hours of sleep, then you'll be able to uh, shake off the effects of fatigue. What should I, I need, or how much did I heal, by the way? Sorry for the. You healed one point, unless one well, point. I uh, you have a pretty good rapport with uh, House Phaedrus's medical staff since mm -hmm. they attended to Frick's earlier. So I'll say you rested in medical care. And that gives you your toughness bonus in wounds back. That's five. So that's so plus four. five. Okay, thank that, you. Is that true for me, too? What's your uh, wounds currently at? My wounds uh, is seven of ten right now. Seven of ten. And your toughness bonus is three, right? Yes. Yeah, you're healing uh, one point per day or your toughness bonus per day with medical care. So you can definitely take advantage of that as well. Awesome. Thank you. So go ahead and grab your three back. Okay, so Eli, you're heading off to this uh, armory. It's kind of it's kind of unnamed. It's a little bit out of the way. Jax, you got it. You got the name of this from one of the house guards. Uh, just as as you were walking around the first time, you asked somebody offhand, "Hey, where can we where can we resupply?" And they pointed you in the direction of this. It's sort of down an alley. Uh, it's dimly lit. Um, but the guy there is, is reported to be a pretty good guy, as you as discovered last time. So Eli, you managed to find your way there pretty quickly. All right, so I uh, I walk in. Does he recognize me? Does, does he say anything to me when I walk in? Uh, yeah, he he does remember you 
from the uh, the turning off the sign outside <laughs> episode. Right, right. And he says, oh, it's you again. Uh, you come, coming to close my shop again or what? What do you want? He goes, uh, I, Eli says, uh, no, I'm just looking to, uh, you know, do a little trading. Got a, got a weapon to sell and looking to buy some stuff. Uh, all right, all right, let's see what you got. What you bring me? So I, uh, I kind of walk up to his counter and put a, uh, what is it, a carbine loss, last rifle? Yeah. That I got from the first session. I put that on the table and be like, mm -hmm. uh, how, much, how much does this get me right here? Uh, he picks it up. He looks at it. He says, uh, hmm. Not in very good condition. A lot of carbonation on this barrel. Looks like it hasn't been taken care of terribly well. Probably some, some underhiver, some scum was using it before. Uh, I'd give you thirty gelt for it. Perfect. Here you go. All right. Well, he goes back to a till and digs out a couple coins and passes them over to you. Grabs the carbine, shoves it in the back. You can hear like a large clang and clatter of like a couple of weapons clashing against each other. He comes back out and says, well, so what can I get you? Well, that was the selling part. Now I'm looking to buy some stuff. What, uh, what type of weapons do you, you have, it, particularly some bladed weapons? Oh, you know, well, I've got, uh, I've got this here sword. I'm... Now, I don't want to metagame this because I did look at the armory in the book. But would I yeah. know the different types of like weapons that you can get and things like that? So I could just uh, name some stuff and see if he has that? You would know anything that's rare. So like Chainsword and Electro Flail and Shock Maul are all rare. <laughs> so I ask him, uh, I kind of pull out, I guess I don't pull out my sword. I un, uh, unlatch my sword kind of from its, if it sits in a scabbard or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and, and ask him, you know, this, this thing does a good job, but I'm looking to, to cut with more effectiveness, one might say. Do you have hmm. any uh, any chain swords here in this armory? Oh, hmm. Well, he takes a look at your sword and he says, "Yeah, well, I've let me let me take a look in the back and see what I might have." He comes back out um, after you hear like a bunch of clangs and rustlings and whatever. Um, he says, "You know, I I used to have a chain sword, but I guess I must have sold it. I'm." I'm straight out right now. They're they're not super easy to come by. Usually they they end up in the hands of the Adeptus Sororitas or the Adeptus Arbites, um, or the Astartes, but uh, they tend to make their own weaponry. Um, tell you what I can do. I can order one on layaway for you. It'll probably get here in about a week. What do you say to that? Uh, are we still talking full price? You know, I'm, I kind of want to to get this weapon today. Are you gonna how much how much will that cost me? Well, I can't sell it to you at a loss just because I have to order it to come in. You could always come back later. I'm, 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 I kind of like just stare at him blankly. I'm like, how much is it? He chews on his teeth for a second. He says, I know you. I like you. All right. I'll give it to you for 250 All right? I'm like, okay. That'll do. I'll take that. You can put that on layaway. All right, all right. Well, you come back in a week now. Now that's at uh, probably um, two thirty, two forty-four, day two forty-four, and uh, I'll have it in for you. Okay. I say that. That's great. Now I need another weapon for today. Uh, do you have any mono blades here in stock? Mono blade? Uh, no, no. I certainly do not. Um, the best I could do to sell you is, well, well, tell you what, I know that, uh, that you need something today. I could give you another sword, probably get close to matching your first sword, um, and I could give it to you for a loan of ten throne gelt, which I would then return to you when your chain sword came in. That sounds great, sir. Thank you uh, for doing me a favor there. All right. He, he goes into the back. He rummages around again. You hear, like... A huge clatter as everything sort of falls over, and he goes, "Ah, God, Emperor!" And you know, everything shuffles and clatters again. He comes back out, pulling a sword and huffing and puffing. He shows it to you. He says, "There, that kind of what you want." You take a look at it, and it's actually almost exactly the clone of the sword that you're using. It's almost precisely the same, except that the the hilt is wrapped in a different color of synthetic leather. Okay, so it. It's balanced and all that stuff. Like I, I guess I'd take the blade and kind of test to see how he, 
how I handle it and if it's yep yeah feels or whatnot. just fine uh, I say great thanks for that uh, last question I have for you uh, do you happen to have any I guess I just pronounce this chameleon cloaks I've heard uh, I've heard that could be helpful chameleon cloaks where are you getting these from uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, JP, it is it is rare under gear. Oh, okay. It's it's actually in the Dark Heresy manual. Yes. Uh, let me see. Yeah, chameleon cloak. Okay, let me take a look. Who? <laughs> oh. No, he is out of the chameleon line cloaks. Okay. Probably would have yeah. never seen one in his life, honestly. Yeah. He res yeah. he responds to you uh, pretty negatively. He says, "Now you're just." You're just fucking with me, right? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is a chameleon cloak? <laughs> because I, I'm like, well, you know, I, I heard about them back on the, the place where I came from. I was just looking to see if they had spread out to this part of the universe. Look, sir, I, I, there's not much else I need. I'll be back in a week. And once again, thank you for your, uh, your loan. As I kind of like touch the blade. He tugs his forelock and he says, "All right, you, you come on back, and I'll, I'll have that chainsword for you." As you leave, he's muttering under his breath, "Chameleon." cloaks what the hell's chameleon <laughs> Sound nonsense perfect so i leave from here that that probably only took what 20 minutes max yeah can i can i go rest for five hours or try to rest and unless the party comes and wakes me up what like you're gonna sleep from like eight until three or something like that yeah 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 that's fine okay so that's what i yeah. got to cool um later in the day in the afternoon jacks um are you are you sort of keeping track of jericus all day yeah. 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 Well, he he finally wakes up and uh he's pretty parched. He's, he sort of looks around. You hear from inside the room, you hear someone going, "Uh, hey. Hey, can can a sucker get some water in here?" I bring him in a little glass of water or whatever. Okay. He he goes to reach to grab it and his hand is immediately stopped because he's he's chained up. He goes, uh -huh. "What?" What the hell is going on here, man? I'm going to step out of the shadows, take the cup, <laughs> and start giving him water. Oh, all right. I'm He's been in there the whole time. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, he starts drinking it down pretty gratefully. It's, it's not a big cup of water, but he gets it down him. He sort of smacks his lips. He says, thanks, pretty lady. <laughs> Uh, you've got much more pressing things than uh, to try and flirt with her right now. Let me bring you up to speed. You are being held by uh, associates of an inquisitor. You are under review. Um, at best, you're going to get out of this with uh, a life of servitude to the emperor. At worst, I'm going to make sure that little pieces of your body are continuously removed until you give us the information we need or your head comes off, whichever happens first. Uh, we tracked you as someone that has illegally purchased. Do the your worst, Arbites. Ka! He spits on me. Yep. <laughs> Jax kind of like looks at that, brushes it off, thinks to himself for a minute. Am I still um, here, by the way? Uh, you tell me. Are you? Uh, I I believe I've stopped staring at the wall by now, and I've made my way into the cell. All right. Sounds good. You saw uh, yeah. you saw Jericus spit at Jax, heard him tell him to do his worst. Okay, um, I will uh, take my mechodendrite, ignite Ooh. the small plasma torch on the end of it, stick it in the wound, and ignite it. Woo! Okay, yeah, you start, you, you ignite it with a, a loud hiss, and then it's, his entire wound just immediately starts charring. The room smells like burnt flesh. It smells disgusting. He's lying I'll there shrieking and I'll release some sacred incense to make it smell better. There we go. <laughs> oh, and now it smells like perfume and burnt meat. It's lovely. It's great. It's like great mixture. Yeah. Uh, so what? He shrieks and recoils. Jax, what are you doing? I'm holding him down. I, I'm holding okay. the limb to the torch. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, I take um, the remainder of the water and pour it on the hot wound TV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Getting crafty. Yeah, so. it, it sort of erupts in a cloud of steam as the torch keeps going. Are you, how long are you holding this on there? Are you just like... It's a plasma torch, a fraction of a second if that. Yeah. It's oh, all right. okay. pretty fucking dangerous. Cool. Okay, so, so when, when, he, when he dies down, he's like whimpering or whatever. Yeah. I say, friend, 
let me give you some quick advice. We are one of the worst groups of people you could ask to do the worst to. Uh, that was what Engelbart thought within one second. Imagine the creativity we can come up with if we had a, a night to think about it. And we would. We'd gather around a table and we'd say, how the hell do we want to just absolutely fuck with this guy? Just, just sort in of ways... sort of wiggle my mechadendrite in the air in a menacing manner. I that mean, looks Frick's terrifying. Over there, she's, she's touched by the warp, man. She, her brain is connected to the demons. Do you want us to think about <laughs> the worst ways to go about this? Frick's I don't just think in the so. background going, boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the. Did you want to spit at me again? Did you want? Do you or, or can I start asking you questions? Do, uh, do you want... Roll an, roll another intimidate check with plus forty this time. Okay. So you're going for a seventy nine or lower. Well, got it. All right. He he looks at you and he says, "What do you want?" Well, that's a that's much nicer, friend. There there, there might even be glasses of water in it for you. <clears throat> um. We uh, obviously tracked you down. You have purchased the organs of the mutant that uh, is at the center of our investigation. So I'd, I'd ask, first of all, why you did that. He sort of he shakes his head, whimpers a little bit, tries to like get his, get his wound a little more comfortable so he's not quite resting on it on the wall. He says, ah, I'm paid a lot of money to do that. That's all it is. It's just business. All right, friend, who's paying you and why, if you can tell me that? He says, I, it's a, eh, and he's sort of like struggling a little bit. And he says, ah, you can't, can't say it, you. can you? You're blocked. Interesting. Um, um, I, I'd like to, s I step out of the shadows and I just, <laughs> again, again, you know, I just keep on. I love it. Are you just like curling up behind Engelbart over here? Like I'm, I just yeah, just come out of just come out of nowhere a little bit, and and as as Jack's pause, I just say, you know, the amount of money that you're being paid to harvest a single organ, we could actually triple in a matter of seconds. So money's not an issue, but the information that you have is we need to know who your employer is, and we need to know now. Oh, his eyes light up, and he says, oh. I'm only being paid 150 gelt per organ. What kind of, what are we talking? Well, we're Just talking. Just stop throwing coins at him. Just aim <laughs> the head. He, he, he turns to you, he says, all right, all right. Listen. He, he looks at Fricks. He looks Fricks in the eyes. He says, listen, if you can get this beast off of me, guarantee me my safety. I'll tell you what you need to know. What beast do you speak of? This asshole right here, and he sort of kicks in the direction of Jax. Jax? I just uh, kind of like look over at Jax and just kind of give him a, a nod, yeah. thing that he'll back off a little bit. And I try to set, put, I put myself between Jax and Jericus. Okay. Yeah, here's like four foot pixie dust just kind of like steps in between the two of us. Like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I light up a low stick and I just kind of chuckle to myself a little bit, and I, I do back away a little bit. All right, all right. Uh, he looks at you, Fricks. He says, "Listen, I've been hired to bring bodies and organs to a flesh smith in the Underhive named Gnarl. I I don't know what happens to them after that. I'm being paid by a man from." Uh, from land under his name is his name is and then you hear sort of this wet pop uh, and and he just sort of slumps to the ground ah uh, yeah that, he, uh, that would be a psychic mental block yeah, yeah, and there's uh, a little bit of blood starts oozing out of his nose that's his brain exploding friend he uh that's yeah he's been insured if you will fricks good job on that though we got some good information um Engelbart, did you record that uh, that last part there? My memory's gone to shit. Yeah, can you play that back? There's a flesh me, smith in the underhive named Narl, N-A-R-L, and that's apparently where this black market guy has been sending all of the bodies and organs that he's been collecting. I just start playing the fleshy pop on loop while projecting on the wall <laughs> over and over again and making chittering noises. <laughs> Uh, Engelbar, if you could uh, 
roll it back a little bit. Just just tell me you got the the part where he said words, not where his brain exploded just a little bit. No, uh, okay, uh, that should be fine. Thank you, friend. Um, okay, looks like we have our next next lead. Uh, I'll phone in to the house faders so that they need to clean this up. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, we need to get Eli, but uh, we have a bit of an issue. The, the, the matron of the house has asked that we join her on a hunt early tomorrow morning, which I know is not conducive to our schedules, but keeping house faders happy and with their guard in our pocket is a part of what we should be doing. Jack. So I... I say we give her the hunt for one yeah. day and get some R&R. The, uh, the, the hunt takes place in the Underhive? Yes, it does. It's, yep. uh, we're hunting rat men. Well, the looks like standard we... spira hobbies. Upper Two. spire tend to go down to the lower spire with high-grade equipment in order to shoot mutants and general riffraff. Yeah. So we're going to do the upper class uh, ivory tower thing and just kind of kill a bunch of poor rat people. Um, but it's like a it's a political thing. We got to do it. Maybe look hey, hey, for I mean, the flesh well, smith since it's honestly, Jack. I'm slightly disturbed mm -hmm. by your apparent sympathy for the mutant. Uh, no, friend. I I just uh, I don't know it, where I come from. We don't really hunt that kind of thing. We usually hunt gigantic monsters that are tormenting cities, but uh, yes, rat men, I suppose, are dirty and filthy little things. So yeah, we can do that. I look at him suspiciously, then slowly potter off in the other direction. Fricks, you've been stammering for a good couple of minutes now. What are you trying to... What are you saying? The hunt takes place in the Underhive. The same place where the apparent flesh smith is, is getting his organs. I... I I don't know if perhaps we can find something out, but maybe we just use the hunt for what our real goal is. Shoot a couple of rats, that's all fine and dandy. But the fleshsmith has activity in the underhive, and I suspect that we might be able to pick something up if we go down there. So why wouldn't we go? And well, uh, It'd be an amazing coincidence, friend. It'd be very convenient. Um, but we, as you know, the underhive is... is uh, uh, humans back on Earth, circa year 2013, would describe it as <laughs> a city the size of probably about you know North America. It's a it is a massive sprawling warren of long. yeah of tunnels and tubes and collapsed uh, you know ruins and all sorts of stuff. But who uh, knows what you might maybe be able it to find. will be in Nebraska. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I would also like to go on the hunt just to try to see if we can get some gear out of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we're doing it. We got it. So let's, let's go get Eli. Make sure he's cool with it. Rest up for the night, and uh, we'll do that hunt tomorrow morning. Cool. Well, we've been going for about an hour, so uh, I think we can call it for about three minutes. Come back, pick it up in the evening, talk to Eli, find out what's going to happen tomorrow. Sounds good. All right, guys, uh, hour one's over. We'll see you in hour two right after this. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll be back, like Steve said, in about three minutes.